welcome everyone to A Course in Miracles talk and meditation. So let's just take a few minutes to quieten our minds. Just rest. While you're just sitting quietly, I'll read one of Helen Shuckman's poems, The Singing Reed. My eyes would look upon the Son of God. For this I came to overlook the world and seeing it forgiven, understand its holiness is but the truth in me. The Christ walks forth in every step I take. God shines within me, lighting up the world in radiant joy. The Holy Spirit comes with me, lest I should turn and lose the way. For God has given me a goal to reach and has made certain that I cannot fail. And so he gave me eyes to see beyond appearances and shadows. I will see the Son of God exactly as he is. And in that sight, is all the world transformed and blessed forever with the love of God. How holy are my footsteps, which go to do the will of God, whose son I am. And how forever perfect is my will, which is in no way separate from his own. That's called the singing reed. It's in The Gifts of God. It's the first poem in the book. So welcome everyone again, a big virtual hug to you and everyone. And welcome to anyone new if you're here for the first time into the group. Well, my guidance has just been to continue these little talks and meditations. So today's talk's going to be, the title is Asking for God's Answer. And it doesn't matter how many groups or teachers or YouTubes you listen to or when you read the course or do the lessons. Our goal is to come to hear the inner guide, the Holy Spirit. The Course in Miracles is one, just one way to come to God. So the Holy Spirit is really the main therapist, the main way. So I'm, my guidance is to do these short talks and meditations because you don't want to take the place of allowing everyone to 
put someone on a pedestal or think someone's more advanced and not use all the time in between to allocate for your joining with the Holy Spirit in your mind. We all have God's answer. We all have it. There's no one that hasn't got access to it. So these are lovely little groups and joinings. It can be helpful. But it's really important as a core student to, to really come to see that it's the inner voice that we want to join with. And these groups can help you get in touch with that a little easier. But they don't replace it. It's really important that all these things are helpful to lead us to that. It's so important not to idolise a teacher. It can delay you from coming into your own connection with your inner guide, be it Jesus, the Holy Spirit or something, something else, someone else. We have this inner guide within us because it's in our mind and we're in the one mind. So it's hard to think of these sort of things around when we hear teachings around the mind because we're used to uh, using the ego thought system that's based in linear time and space and it's we've sort of got a habit of using a particular mind and the holy spirit is the one the answer in our mind that helps us shift away from body identification to mind or spirit identification so as core students we're really to be it's really important to dedicate yourself to that quietness those periods of quietness where you do your forgiveness practices you do your lesson practices and let any teachers or anyone else be a helpful tool their tools but you can get way laid if you idolize a teacher and I've seen it happen and you can stay stuck talking about a teacher for years and years and never looking within and finding your own inner sanctuary where the where the voice is helping you with your forgiveness lessons so my constant message is, I'm here to be helpful, but hopefully everyone here on this group will one day leave the group because you won't need to listen to me anymore. That's not to say if I'm still around in five years and you're still here, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, who knows? But the message is, that, that God's answer is within us. And it's really important to validate. Now, how you can validate it is to remember that you only have the ego and the Holy Spirit in your mind. We're listening, we're the decision maker listening to one or the other. So when you get answers, when you get um, something that brings you closer to awakening to realising God, it's the Holy Spirit. And if there's something that's taking you into fear and guilt, into those beliefs, that's the ego. We don't really have our own identity, even though that can feel like an unusual thing to hear, because the ego is the voice that identifies as us. And it's only right towards the end of the journey that that's revealed and it's revealed in a beautific way. 
So we can't skip over things. We have to look at conflict. We have to look at the hatred. We have to look at the judgment. Everything has to be brought to the Holy Spirit. Everything. So forgiveness is my function, which means that all day long I'm bringing all my forgiveness opportunities to the Holy Spirit to help for him to correct. Sometimes we do it really well and sometimes we miss it, but it doesn't matter. So that's really the essence of the theme today, uh, we'll be reading uh, some section out of the text and then doing a lesson for the meditation. But we have a guide within us. And that answer is, God, is God's answer. So perfect love knows nothing about us being in a world of separation of bodies. So sometimes when we hear God doesn't know we're here, it's sort of true, but it's not true. It's a constant paradox with these teachings. So one of the things I did was I always used a teaching in a way that brought me peace. So do that. So if you think God doesn't know I'm here and it doesn't bring you peace, don't use that teaching. Use a teaching like I would change it a little bit and say, uh, his spirit knows I'm here. Part of God, his spirit is helping me, knows I'm here and knows I'm in a projection and is helping me so use the teachings in a way that work for you that's what they're there for but of course we have to know that God knows that we're not here because ultimately we're not here so all the teachings have to be there because they speak to us on different levels of understanding. And if, the, and if we missed out that God doesn't know we're here, we would think that God somehow knows about separation or has some part of God that um, understands separation and bodies and suffering and sickness and death. And that couldn't, and that's why this teaching is the way it is. So if we understand the teachings in the right way, we can be really helped. So the other thing, uh, there's another part of the teachings that, that you can be helped. You use it in a particular way that can be helpful, which I shared a few weeks ago, was this idea that when we say, I am the dreamer of the dream, we have to understand this in a way because it's helpful to us to say that the dream is, I'm not in the dream and can't change anything. <clears throat> I can change the way I view it by using the Holy Spirit. But the dream is coming from a part of my mind that at the moment when I'm in my ego thought system is out of awareness. So to think, to say to yourself that I, as the individual ego self, cause this whole dream, that's, the, that's not the right way to get you to peace. See, all the teachings that Jesus is giving us, he's giving us to help us not to cause us more fear. So if you're listening to a teaching and you go into fear, you're in the wrong understanding of it. So some people have come to me and said, I feel guilty for causing 
the dream of death. But how could you be guilty for causing it when it never happened? We have to see that this is a dream and the Christ mind dreamt it. The Christ mind that was whole and complete and beautiful and pristine had a tiny thought and it went off and it did, it did something. It just went down like a little rabbit hole and couldn't remember how to get back home. So that's the prodigal son story. It's a story. There was no son that left home. Uh, there's no farmer that had a celebration. It's not that something happened with a family and a son left home and then got into the pigsty and was eating the pig's food. That's not what happened. There's no, these stories are metaphors to tell us that we have left a part of our mind and we're, it's split and where we're living is in an, a false identity and to come back to experience ourselves as God created us. And the help we have is the Holy Spirit and Jesus. These are the inner guides. So time has to be given over to spend with those inner guides. We ca you can hear the Holy Spirit and you probably already are hearing it and not validating it. So one way to validate that you are already hearing is if any answer comes through, anything, anytime, anywhere that is helpful to you, it's the Holy Spirit. You may not say to yourself, oh, the Holy Spirit just helped me. But I started on my journey, I started to do the validating. Must that was a Holy Spirit thought because it helped me. I only have the Holy Spirit and the ego. So if it's not the ego, it has to be the Holy Spirit. It has to be the Holy Mind prompting you, helping you, reminding you. So even if you don't wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, be you in charge of the day, it doesn't matter. You've already just attending these groups. You already have that calling of your heart. You're already putting the Holy Spirit in charge in just in some prayer, some part of your mind, some place, some time where you've asked. So there'll be little things that come in to help you. So I put a post up onto the Zoom to Miracles Facebook group, just sort of saying that sometimes as we're heading into a new year, we can, it's sort of like a symbol in the dream being a new year because time and space are illusions. But let's use time and space for holy purposes, for awakening, for helping ourselves and other minds wake up. So, so the symbol of a new year, we can give it over and we can say, I want to deepen my commitment and my willingness to practice forgiveness this year, this coming year. And you might even notice places where you compromise in your life. There might be areas of your life that you feel you can't trust guidance to direct you. You, you feel too um, scared, fearful to trust the inner guide with directing everything. You might um, have a feeling of, you know, I'm ready to trust completely or I'm ready to trust a little more. You might have uh, some relationship, some, some special relationship that you've been working on and you can really, you're really aware how you uh, don't want to release judgment. 
and that you're attracted to the guilt within that person. So there might be, I suggest between now and next week, or over there, just the next week, just sort of feel into some sort of area in your, you know, forgiveness practice where you would like to focus more. It might be um, a, a relationship, as I said, it might be uh, something to do with the work situation or your job or and really put the emphasis on it going into next year that you're going to put in, be more vigilant in those interactions with listening to the inner guide as you're, as you're interacting with that person or being at work um, or even with maybe illnesses. So as we know, if we have any pain or illness in our body, it goes back to unforgiveness. So if you're at currently, you're, all you've, your whole focus is at the moment uh, is pain and illness in any way, you can just say to yourself, I'm just going to use the medications and whatever I'm doing in the world stuff for this particular thing that's going on for me but I'm going to up the forgiveness. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit for help to, with anything that I know, and we all know what's uh, still unforgiven for us, things that we, people or situations that happen to us as children that we will not bring to the Holy Spirit. We're still stuck in that story of abuse or uh, all the, you know, the belief in abuse. We have to bring everything to the Holy Spirit. So remember last week when we read that beautiful Christmas section, uh, one of the sentences in that is, you know, bring the Holy Spirit everything that has hurt you. So the Holy Spirit works with us uh, in our mind in a unique way. And as course students, this is really important to develop that relationship and spend time. And sometimes you might find that you need to be on your own for a couple of days to really go deeply in this, especially if you live with people and you don't have that uh, that time to be really quiet. You can give yourself, um, take yourself away for a day or two or even more into silence and take a list of the things that you just say, I'm done with this um, grievance. I'm going to go away. I'm going to work with the Holy Spirit in Jesus and I want to come back having, having it completely healed. And that's the way I started doing my forgiveness work. I would dedicate weekends because I worked full time at the time and I um, would dedicate the weekends to, uh, I just said, I, I want to be free of this particular grievance. I want it changed. Now, we can't change it because we're stuck in it, right? We believe it's true. We're projecting. So... How we come is we ask. We have to ask, help me be free of this grievance. Bring into my mind something that will give me another perception so I'm free of it. And then listen. Something will come in. If it's really that deep calling of your heart, 
So for me, I wanted all my relationships harmonious. That was what I was um, at the start uh, when I really thought I'm going to do this Course in Miracles properly. I'm going to do everything it says to do, do it to my best of my ability. I just had this calling of my heart. I'm tired of um, relationships where they were strained, um, they weren't loving. And little did I know that I had to change. My mind had to change in all of them. And it doesn't matter what that other is saying or doing. It's my mind that has to change. So we take full responsibility for anything we're seeing in that person. So that's why the course, if you can understand that responsibility for sight and I am the dreamer of the dream, it's all pointing us to taking responsibility for every single meaning that we give anything, anyone, any situation, any body part, any time, anywhere. There's not one part of uh, what you're seeing that has any meaning. It all comes from our mind, from my mind. So we have to take it to my mind is giving it a meaning. Nothing I see means anything. I have given it. So it's the same that those first two lessons are the same as responsibility for sight. So if I can change the meaning it has with the Holy Spirit showing me the true meaning, the world, the real world will open up to my mind. It has to. And nothing, there's no loss or sacrifice in coming to see the true self of everyone, including ourselves. And it's a one true self. It's not like there's individual selves. So forgiveness is bringing everything. So just the thing that's happening today, right now for you, or the last few days, or maybe something over Christmas that you got upset about. So Christmas is, uh, is, is, look, it's just another day and time given a name, but it's a time, it's just the same day to practice forgiveness the way we always do. No one can do forgiveness for you. No one, even Jesus says, he can't come into our minds and do the forgiveness for us. You can't do forgiveness for anyone else. We all have to take responsibility for our own project projections. And we will be helped. The help is there. It's like all the help's being offered to us. And we're just saying, no, no, I'll do it my way, you know, seeking and not finding. And it's a very gentle way. The Holy Spirit wakes us up through gentleness because all these beautiful teachings about, are about how lovely we are, how holy and how beautiful and how pure. So all the teachings rise our minds up into like some beautiful joy and love. So, the out, so all we lose is our fear and our belief in guilt, the belief that we're unworthy, all this rubbish that the ego says. And eventually you just won't hear the ego. You'll just be living in this sort of divine mind. And you won't. That's why he says it's a quietness, a tranquil mind. Because there's no ego left. Because you've brought every ego idea and belief to the Holy Spirit to have it corrected. So accepting the atonement, he's asking us and motivating us to accept the atonement, which is asking, asking for the correction. So we need to develop the uh, skill of listening for that answer 
And as I said before, if something comes in to be even a slightly helpful, the answer's getting through, right? Well, sometimes all you have to do is say, Holy Spirit. And he says he can, he can feel when we're calling for him, ask him. And the answer that comes in unusual ways. So you have to let go of how you think it's going to come in, how you think it's going to be. It's like you just have to be open-minded, asking, and then just sit there open and listen and trust that the answer will come. And sometimes it doesn't come in straight away because even though you think you're asking, there's still a little bit of fear about, oh, I don't, I'm not sure about this answer. Actually, I think I just want to try to work it out myself. And that's all right. There will come a time when we really open up. And that's okay. And sometimes an answer will come through in some other way. So today's talk is about asking for God's answer. And um, so uh, I'm going to start reading now from the text. I've got the FIP version and Shan and I are going to read together. I'm going to read one paragraph and she'll read the next. I'll give you the text if you'd like to read along. Um, it's chapter 11, uh, section 8, page 211 in the FIP version. And... Um, So Sh Shannon and I have been working together through, we were guided, Shannon was guided to, I was guided to ask for help, for support around some technical things and, and support with the group. Shannon felt that answer coming through her from Jesus saying, your purpose is to support Kate. Now, that's really lovely. I really appreciate it. But also Shannon has got a lovely, um, beautiful way about her. She listens and follows her guidance. So she is the teacher as well. She's a beautiful teacher. So we've been guided. We're going to be doing some things together next year, which I'll share a little bit about closer into the new year. And so just as a way of um, bringing her more into what I'm doing. Shannon, we're just getting, we was guided that Shannon just read as part of this set, these set sayings, just so everyone starts to see that uh, Shannon is there um, more going to be around more and more as part of this, part of just supporting me. So thank you, Shannon. So this section of the course is called The Problem and the Answer, but in the Circle of Atonement edition, it's called Asking for God's Answer. And I actually really love that because it's the crux of it, asking him. So in our mind, the answer is there. There is an answer. And so... We just have to remind ourselves because we forget. And believe me, I forgot all the time. So anytime anyone says, oh, Kate, did you ever do this? I say, yes, I did everything. <laughs> I did everything. I forgot. I know I forgot to ask. I forgot to do forgiveness. I, you know, I had fearful days. You know, I was overwhelmed with the ego, I, you know. So... I wasn't this amazing, even though I was very dedicated. <laughs> I feel that I'm just like everyone else. If, you know, whatever anyone says, oh, I just had this sort of, I did this. I say, oh, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> so we're going to flip-flop around. So it's really about remembering to ask. So whenever we have an upset, whenever we're, annoyed or irritated or not sure what to do as in planning or where to go or what to say 
it's, it's to get into the habit of asking, constantly asking, what would you have me to do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? Okay, here I am. Someone's just arrived. I'm not saying someone's arrived now, but, you know, this is sort of like, um, so say, for example, in your daily life, you're sitting at home, someone arrives at the door. Um, you probably saw me twice. Uh, someone arrived while I was doing the satsang. And uh, Anish, the first one I said, oh, I'm not going to answer it. And then I got guidance, go and answer it. So um, because my first thought was I didn't want to interrupt the group, but then um, so, I, so the answer was coming in. Um, but for many, many years, the answer took a long time to come in. So the first, I remember the first time I started doing this, it took a week for me to get an answer. But gradually, the more I asked and the more I got clear and trying to hear and sit quietly and notice, see, it's about noticing the answer and validating, oh, yes, I see something from the course just came into my mind. There was a section that just illuminated. Oh, and there was like a, a sentence illuminated in my mind. Oh, that's the answer. So that's the Holy Spirit putting the answer in our mind. So these are the ways we can validate it. If, you know, if he shows you something and then you see something from the past and then you see what's going on now and you're like, oh, I see. I see this is the past. This, is, this has always happened. That's the Holy Spirit showing you that it's a past thing. He's giving you that uh, little reminder that you're seeing the past and the person that you're upset with is not really upsetting you. You're upset from some belief that's come through from the past. And if you heal it right now, all that disappears. That whole story all goes away. So your whole, your whole life story will change. You won't be able to, if someone says, tell me about your life, you will not be able to recall any abuse, anybody ever being unkind to you. So I started to see at, at the end of my journey, people said, people, you know, I might meet someone and they might say, oh, tell me about yourself. I'll say, I've just been so blessed. Everyone's been kind and loving to me because remember, Jesus says, you're only going to remember all the kind and loving things anyone's ever done because everything else is gone. So that's where we're going to be. We won't have a story. We won't be able to tell anyone a story of unfair treatment because it'll just be disappeared. And your whole, your past that you usually, you know, especially if you go to a therapist or someone like that, you just want to talk about the trauma. But there will be no trauma the Holy Spirit has dissolved it through these little forgiveness opportunities that you're going through it eventually he, he just it's all wiped out because it's looked at from above the battleground and it's looked at that you that he might even show he showed me <clears throat> that I even chose this before I came into this lifetime and that's, and that's in like the disappearance of the universe, right? But it was right at the end of all the forgiveness lessons. I saw how I chose my dad to be the one to, that, I, that I would have and I would project onto. And it was all shown that you're watching it from a space where you're watching what your mind did and what happened but you're also saying you're also saying that it never happened so you're going to see you're going to have the holy spirit's mind in the end you're going to see all these teachings come to life and they're going to be beautiful because you're going and it's not special to have this mind it's in fact our natural state of mind to be in the belief in separation and identify, see, when we identify as a body, we identify with suffering, sickness, illness, pain and death. That's what we do. It all comes through as body identification. 
and everybody here is identifying as a body, not many aren't. So they're all going to back up all those ideas, that sickness that, that people believe that we're all stuck in the same dream, that the body, you know, there's just this belief that the body has autonomy on its own to get sick. So we're going to be the way showers, a very small um, awakened group. But that we, we, like I might reach, I don't know, a thousand minds, but someone here could reach millions. And that's what he said to me. He said, someone somewhere sometime uh, can take, just from something I've said, could get a spark and be helped and could be, could help millions and millions so don't um don't concern yourself with um your part because we might individually play very small parts but we may be part of some helping someone that goes along and helps many more we're all playing our part, but he's in charge. He knows where we need to go and what we need to say. So forgiveness, when we're when before we've awakened, forgiveness is our function. All day, every day, forgiveness, if you can remember. And it's not easy to remember. <laughs> but sometimes we remember better. But yeah, so this year as you come up to you to the new year even write out your commitment sometimes it's better to write it out and just say look I gave over 2022 to undoing this this little grievance that I know has been sitting there and is stopping me you know and if you're ill or in pain and you're not sure what it is and you can't find just sit quietly and say holy spirit Show me what this is about, why I have pain, why I have illness. I want to see it, like feel this really strong energy within you. I want it healed. I want to be free of illness and pain. And I'm happy to work with you for as long as it takes for this to go. So don't have a time frame around it, but you can do it. Because if my mind can do it and others that went before me showed the way for me, there's nothing special except a dedication. I'm willing and I'm ready. It doesn't mean we've mastered it. We're just there. So this is what he's telling us. And this first, um, I'm going to be starting to read it, the second paragraph of this but this is how he wants us this is this is Jesus telling us how we are to be so if you can feel into becoming like a little child not knowing anything this is the best way to be to come to do practice forgiveness so the bible tells you to become like little children Little children recognise that they do not understand what they perceive. And so they ask what it means. Do not make the mistake of believing that you understand what you perceive. For its meaning is lost to you. Yet the Holy Spirit has saved its meaning for you. And if you will let him interpret it he will restore to you what you have thrown away yet while you think you know its meaning you will see no need to ask it of him so I'm just going to make a few comments here I mean it's pretty self-explanatory isn't it that while we think we know the meaning You'll have no need to ask. But one thing that we can say is pain and illness 
and depression and anxiety aren't much fun to live in. And we can be free of all these things if we ask for help and get the meaning of everything changed by the Holy Spirit. So that's what motivated me. I had sickness, I had pain, and I had depression and anxiety. I had the whole lot. And there's nothing more motivating to want to be free when you're suffering so badly. And so why not do this? Yes, we're going to muck it up. Yes, we're going to do it. You know, we're going to have good days and bad days. Yes. But why not make this your whole life? Why not put this as the number one thing in your life? The connecting with the Holy Spirit and having him correct me, advise me in his gentle way, helping me like an inner therapist. You don't have to spend money to go and see one because now you've got the real one in your mind and it's free. <laughs> okay, Shannon, get you to read the next paragraph. Thanks, Kim. The Bible, oh, sorry, you do not know the meaning of anything you perceive. Not one thought you hold is wholly true. The recognition of this is your firm beginning. You are not misguided. You have accepted no guide at all. Instruction in perception is your great need for you understand nothing. Recognize this, but do not accept it for understanding is your inheritance. Perceptions are learned and you are not without a teacher, yet your willingness to learn of him depends on your willingness to question everything you learned of yourself. For you who learned amiss should not be your own teacher. Yeah, and so we, we have to have the willingness to question everything we learn for ourselves. We are so sure we know what everything is about. No? So it's that whole um, coming to, so I used to say things out loud like, I know nothing, I don't know what this means. I don't know what anything means. I know nothing, you know, just to, just to get this sense of this idea that I know what anything is or I know what someone should do or I know how someone should act or I, I know what someone should spend their money on or not spend their money on. It's coming to, that's what he means by being a little child. It's just saying, it sort of goes along with I don't know anyone's best interests and I don't know my own. So anytime we think we know what we should do or someone else should do or how someone should live their life, you know, even when my daughter was taking drugs, you know, he said to me, how do you know she's not meant to take them? How would you know that's in her best interest? So this is, it can sound really it's like there's no order of difficulty in miracles. It's like you would think that it would be a best thing for a drug addict to stop taking drugs. But he said to me, how would you know? How would you know? How could you say to your daughter, you need to get off drugs? You need to stop taking them. And she went on to help a lot of people and still is. Um, and that's when that I know nothing. I know nothing. I had to repeat that out loud quite a lot because the only way I could have another perception or another idea or another way to look at it was to let go of this idea that I already knew. And that's being a child, right? Because when we're children, you know, you see little children are walking around and what's this? What's that? What does this do? Oh, I haven't seen this. So what if you never knew anything about a drug addict? What if you didn't think drugs were bad? That's all we've learned. That's why he says you've been misguided. 
um, because all along the way we're told by the world um, certain things, right? We've been to, we've 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 come into this uh, ego world, and we're told, oh, this is good and this is bad and this is how it is. He's saying, let go of everything that you've already um, told yourself, because you know in that section, self versus self concept. He says you've been taught along the way. So we have to let go of all these ideas. Every idea that we believe in or hold as true, here we have to let go of it so that we can be taught a new way to perceive. So and down to paragraph four, no one can withhold truth except from himself. Yet God will not refuse you the answer he gave ask then for what is yours for which you did not make and do not defend yourself against the truth you made the problem god has answered ask yourself therefore but one simple question do i want the problem or do i want the answer This is if you would just sort of sit for a few seconds now and just think about that line. Do I want the problem? So, or do I want the answer? So let's just think about what he means by the problem. So if I think that my if I think I know that my daughter should get off drugs and should stop taking them I believe that's the problem I believe there's a problem and I'm and remember that every time I try to sort the problem out seek an answer for a problem that I think is real I'll never get an answer because the ego is seek and do not find. So all the things I tried to do to get my daughter to stop taking drugs never worked, right? Because I was asking the ego. And the ego never comes up with a solution. So do I want the problem in that the ego says there's a problem to solve? So do I want the problem that the ego is giving me? and telling me, hey, let's try to sit here and spend hours and hours trying to figure out an answer, right? <clears throat> the ego will tie your mind up for days, weeks and years trying to figure out an answer. And the Holy if so do I want the answer? Yes. Show me another way to perceive this situation. So I'm not seeing a problem. I won't see a problem to fix. So his answer to me was just see her holiness. That's all you need to do. Just see the beautiful Christ within her. Trust this teaching as he whispered to me, you know, just trust. If you do this, it'll just trust me because I'm thinking this won't work. You know, but I had to trust because nothing had worked before. And I decided to trust his teachings and do what I was guided. And it worked. Someone was able to see the beauty of her. So I stopped lecturing her, stopped telling her what to do and she should shower or she should move or she should change her clothes. Or I stopped saying everything to her and I just told her how beautiful she was, how perfect. How lovely. I just saw the innocence and the beauty within her. And when you, when someone sees your true self, it's like a light. He says there's like a little, you know, like a little pilot light. You know how we have those heaters and they have a little pilot light going on. And then you turn the heater on and and the and you hear the, the thing start up and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing, right? Where, because we all have a little spark. He talks about it in the course, this little spark. And we're 
the miracle workers is that we turn that on for them. We turn that on when we're seeing the holiness. And that was beautiful. And I'm, and that was all I was asked to do. And it was so lovely because it changed my mind. And I all my behavior and all my words just disappeared. Everything that I was trying to help her with all stopped. And I just said, oh, I just see your beauty. I started to speak out these, like the Christ blessing. For the first time, these words were coming out of my mouth saying, I just see you're so beautiful, so perfect. She's like, mum, I'm a junkie. <laughs> I know. I just see your holiness, beautiful and perfect and whole. And that was so lovely to hear. Can you imagine us as children, as teenagers, you know, being confused because we're in the ego and we're, all, we're searching for an answer? And imagine your parent or an auntie or a friend is just saying, oh, I just see your perfection. And you don't have to say it out loud, but you can if you like, if it feels right. Um, you know, I say to my grandchildren, you know, you are just so beautiful and perfect and it's got nothing to do with your body. So I have to say that because, you know, with children growing up these days, it's all ego's world, it's all about, you know, making your body and your clothes and everything that you put on the body all about being perfect, right? So this is such a lovely message. And he says that um, the miracle worker, that's all we need to do is all we need to do is wordlessly or with words or in any way, we will give the message that our brother is perfect. He's sinless. So we don't have to worry about that. All we need to do is, is we can do it in our minds or with words. So do I want the problem or do I want the answer? Well, it's so much easier when we want the answer right. And in the end, you, there won't be any problems. You won't see a problem. But while we're perceiving problems, we need to do this and ask for help. Decide for the answer and you will have it. For you will see it as it is and it is yours already. Shannon? You may complain that this course is not sufficiently specific for you to understand and use. Yet perhaps you have not done what it specifically advocates. This is not a course in the play of ideas, but in their practical application. Nothing could be more specific than to be told that if you ask, you will receive. The Holy Spirit will answer every specific problem as long as you believe that problems are specific. His answer is both many and one, as long as you believe that the one is many. You may be afraid of his specificity for fear of what you think it will demand of you. Yet only by asking will you learn that nothing of God demands anything of you. God gives, he does not take. When you refuse to ask, it is because you believe that asking is taking rather than sharing. I, I really hope uh, you can you're hearing this really clearly. I mean, it seems so clear to me and I really hope through going through it slowly and explaining it in a lot of detail that it's really making sense. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will give you only what is yours and will take nothing in return. For what is yours is everything and you share it with God. That is its reality. Would the Holy Spirit, 
who wills only to restore be capable of misinterpreting the question you must ask to learn his answer? You have heard the answer, but you have misunderstood the question. You believe that to ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit is to ask for deprivation. So this, this um, paragraph is talking about when we're scared of the answer. So the last line that Shannon read was uh, when you refuse to ask, it is because you believe that asking for guidance or an answer is taking rather than sharing. So there's a belief in us that somehow, or for a period of time, there's a belief in us that the Holy Spirit's answer, we might lose something. In other words, something is taken from us that we're valuing now. Um, and so that next paragraph is talking about how um, not, not what's going to happen when we get the answer, but that we're scared of the answer. Um, and, uh, and when he says you have misunderstood the question, um, the, the question is always about, he talks about this question through the course. And generally, if you, when you come across a section that talks about the question, remember what the question is, is how do I get my own way? That's what he talked when he mentions the question. I want my answer. I want something to help me in the illusion. <laughs> so, um, so we, what happens is there might be a period of time where where you're asking, um, but you're fearful of the answer. And uh, so the reason why what this section is telling, is trying to remind us that when we, if you're experiencing that, he's telling us that only blessings and good can come of having his answer, right? So you can look at me, you can look at other teachers that are living in happiness and joy and peace and know that the answer that we get brings peace. It's the miracle. So the miracle brings a change of perception and only brings peace to our mind. So, we, so it's encouraging to, um, for for us, if you are experiencing that and you're scared of the answer, the only way you could be scared of the answer is being in the ego because the ego um, thoughts say that something will be lost, there'll be some sacrifice or something will be taken. And so I've discussed this with many groups and done workshops on this and even this was sort of the crux of a retreat I did um, where I got everyone, I think we've even done it in this group, got everyone to write out what they fear about awakening or having the Holy Spirit's guidance. And then looking at that fear or what you think the loss is or the sacrifice is, and you have to identify it for yourself. Right, try to identify what you think that loss or sacrifice will be. And then the, uh, the answer to that is having a look around and seeing the people that are practicing forgiveness and have done forgiveness. And do they look like they're in loss and sacrifice? So the evidence that you have is that practicing forgiveness and, and asking the Holy Spirit shows you it brings peace. So the evidence is there to trust because we have to let go of our old ways and come to um, 
let go of, you know, like if I say, for example, the um, um, the the ex um, example I was giving about my daughter, if I hadn't trusted in that guidance, and I was and I had a felt, oh, I'm too scared that she might die if I don't keep telling her what she's doing wrong and how to fix her life and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, would have, I would have been too scared of the Holy Spirit's answer. But once you realise that the Holy Spirit's answer brings peace to everyone, is, is the true answer and is the true helpfulness and you can't see the miracles that are going to happen from it because what's happening is you're going past that fear of I'm going to trust the inner guide to lead me. I'm going to trust the answer. So do I want the problem or do I want the answer? And as I said, what he's saying here is the ego is going to say the answer is going to bring a problem, <laughs> right? But we have to trust. This is where we have to develop, keep developing trust. That his answer will, we don't know what his answer is going to be and we don't know how it's going, where it's going to take us. So asking and trusting, it's a practical application. This is what we're doing. We're doing a trust trusting and asking and accepting and letting go of the way we've done things before and letting him come into us and show us a new way to respond and new things to have in our mind and different ways to see and perceive. And so in that moment when I was doing my big trust, I had his guidance and he holds your hand and he leads you through and he clears your mind and he gives you little things to do with this guidance and that's what he did he's got me to see her holiness and he said bless her that's all you need to do let go of everything else because obviously the reason why I had to let go of all the other things was that that was the seeing a problem and here um, he's saying that we have heard the answer, and I've probably heard that answer before, um, but, I'd, but you've misunderstood the question. In other words, the way I look at that, anything to do with a question is that I'm, I want it my way. I want to do it my way because I think it'll still work. Even though it's never worked, I'm still going to try my way. All right, <laughs> we have to, have to let go of that. Uh, so you believe that to ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit is to ask for deprivation. In other words, I'm going to be deprived of something. So that's that he's telling us that's what we have to notice in ourselves and continue to trust even when we feel that this might be true and we all will. And the reason why we all do it is because it's here in the course. He knows what we're feeling, what's going on in our mind. And he's telling us this is what's going to happen. And that's when you can say, actually, I do. I feel like I don't want to let go. I feel like there'll be a loss or a deprivation if I ask for guidance. So I'll just keep going, as I said, going along thinking, oh, there's a problem and I've got to sort it out. And he's asking us to trust. This is all about trusting, asking, because we wouldn't ask if we didn't trust. Okay, Shannon. Thank you, Kate. I just wanted to also add, um, in my experience, the trust was, um, I started with small things. And the, the more I trusted, the more I wanted to trust because of, of the experience involved with trusting versus not. And so even it, just starting small with trust and you know little things or seemingly little things really, really helps. I mean, before, before I knew it, I was just trusting with all of it. So 
Yeah, thank you. Little child of God, you do not understand your father. You believe in a world that takes because you believe that you can get by taking. And by that perception, you have lost sight of the real world. You are afraid of the world as you see it, but the real world is still yours for the asking. Do not deny it to yourself, for it can only free you. Nothing of God will enslave his son whom he created free and whose freedom is protected by his being. Blessed are you who are willing to ask the truth of God without fear. For only thus can you learn that his answer is the release from fear. Yeah. Blessed are you who are willing to ask the truth of God without fear. For only thus can you learn that his answer is the release from fear. Beautiful child of God, you are asking only for what I promised you. Do you believe I would deceive you? The kingdom of heaven is within you. Believe that the truth is in me, for I know that it is in you. God's sons have nothing they do not share. Ask the truth <clears throat> of any son of God. And you have asked it of me. Not one of us has, but has the answer in him to give to anyone who asks it of him. And so just one last paragraph there, Shannon, and we'll finish the text. Ask anything of God's son and his father will answer you. For Christ is not deceived in his father and his father is not deceived in him. Do not then be deceived in your brother and see only his loving thoughts as his reality. For by denying that his mind is split, you will heal, heal yours. Accept him as his father accepts him and heal him unto Christ. For Christ is his healing and yours. Christ is the son of God who is in no way separate from his father, whose every thought is as loving as the thought of his father by which he was created. Be not deceived in God's son for thereby you must be deceived in yourself. And being deceived in yourself, you are deceived in your father in whom no deceit is possible. So I'm just gonna read the first couple of lines um, of the next sentence, the next paragraph. In the real world, there is no sickness, for there is no separation and no division. Only loving thoughts are recognised. And because no one is without your help, the help of God goes with you everywhere. As you become willing to accept this help by asking for it, you will give it because you want it. I'm just going to, the only reason why I read that out is because that word ask is really important. Asking for God's answer. I have to ask for God's answer. So whenever I'm upset, I have to ask for God's answer. I want God's answer because it brings peace. It releases me from fear his answer and when I'm asking for God's answer I don't know what it's going to be right because when I'm asking I'm usually in fear so I have to ask 
So I'm caught up in the ego and the only way to have peace, so I'm in fear and the only way to get to peace is to ask for help and something will come in to bless or show me or radiate. You might hear someone's voice. You might hear, you'll hear the answer in some way and it will release you from fear. And the release of fear is peace. So now I'm going to uh, read through uh, workbook lesson 49. And this uh, it was funny how I was directed to that section of the text, and then I and in earlier in the week I was directed into this um, lesson, and they said all joined together, right? God's voice speaks to me all through the day. It is quite possible to listen to God's voice all through the day without interrupting your regular activities in any way. The part of your mind in which truth abides is in constant communication with God, whether you are aware of it or not. It is the other part of your mind that functions in the world and obeys the world's laws. It is this part that is constantly distracted, disorganised and highly uncertain. The part that is listening to the voice for God is calm, always at rest and wholly certain. It is really the only part there is. The other part is a wild illusion, frantic and distraught, but without reality of any kind. Try today not to listen to it. Try to identify with the part of your mind where stillness and peace reign forever. Try to hear God's voice call to you lovingly, reminding you that your creator has not forgotten his son. We will need at least four five-minute practice periods today. So I'm feeling maybe 10-minute um, meditation. So I'll just give the instructions. I'll read the rest of this and then we'll do the 10 minutes. We'll do what he's asking us to do. We will try to actually to hear God's voice reminding you of him and of yourself. We will approach this happiest and holiest of thoughts with confidence, knowing that in doing so, we are joining our will with the will of God. He wants you to hear his voice. He gave it to you to be heard. Listen in deep silence. Be very still and open your mind. Go past all the raucous shrieks and sick imaginings that cover your real thoughts and obscure your eternal link with God. Sink deep into the peace that waits for you beyond the frantic, righteous thoughts and sights and sounds of this insane world. You do not live here. We are trying to reach your real home. We are trying to reach the place where you are truly welcome. We are trying to reach God. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to read the last paragraph. Let's just go into that meditation. I'll just repeat some key lines as we start the meditation. Listen in deep silence. Be very still and open your mind. Go past all the walker shrieks and sick imaginings that cover your real thoughts and obscure your eternal link with God. Sink deep into the peace that waits for you beyond the frantic righteous thoughts and the sights and the sounds of this insane world. I do not live here. I am trying to reach my real home. I am trying to reach the place where I am truly welcome. I am trying to reach God.
Okay, we'll come back. Hopefully you experience some really deep inner peace. We can hear that voice for God leading us, helping us, correcting us, giving us ideas, ways to see the world, ways to see others, changing our perception. So the main word today is ask. Just keep asking. Keep giving time over for the answer. And like I said at the start, maybe at the for the for the next week, just think about something that you'd like gone, any grievance, any belief, some belief in lack. And you can just ask, keep asking the Holy Spirit to help you that you would want it gone. It's like a thorn in your side, and you'd like it released. And remember. We have to come with like children that don't know anything. So don't bring any of your knowledge or past with you when you ask. Just that sort of surrender, like I let go of all the ideas and beliefs I have around this. I let go and I leave an open space, Holy Spirit, into this open space where I've let go of everything I've thought I know. Bring me the answer. It will heal this belief or this idea, or this fear, or this idea of guilt, or whatever it is. So we can make a sort of fresh start with a new year and ask. Thank you, everyone. Would everyone like to unmute their mics just to do a blessing and a gratitude and thank you. And Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. 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 Thank you.